I got a couple of emails and messages about people wanting to check out the rig, my portable VJ rig, and kind of the state that it's in at the moment. Um, so I thought I'd do like a quick sort of rig rundown. I did two little um, jam sessions with it, just direct out straight to the computer, and I thought it might be interesting to go through how it's set up, how it's all nice and portable, and how many different sort of inputs and things I've got going on. So the computer over there is recording a direct out. Got it all plugged in and hooked up. Thought I'd just walk you through it. So I'm trying to capture everything here. Uh, ignore this synth back here. All I've got is everything in the box. And I've also got this little processor that's hanging off the side. Uh, give a close up on the box in a second, but pretty much this is the portable, mobile, relatively small, about the length of my arm. Uh, and then this is some extra stuff. I'm thinking maybe I'll build a second case that has uh, some processing stuff in it. And so I can just plug these two boxes together um, and kind of swap stuff in and out of them when I see fit. But um, in the meantime, uh, this box, a little extra processor here. So, looking at the top setup here, I've got two iPad 2s. They're both running an app called Color Code VJ, which is a pretty cool, very straightforward VJing app. Two banks, uh, you've got speed control, playback, you can scrub backwards and forwards. Wow. It's not really I'm on the wrong one, that would be a lie. Come here, that's me scrubbing, speed control, it's a little fiddly, that's all right. Click on this, change it to something else. Got to and if you touch the center, it'll fade between the two, or you can fade manually. So, two of those set up. One of them you can see is filming me. Uh, it's got a bunch of kind of text and built-in stuff. Haven't really used it. Um, it's a bit of a pain to get stuff on. Uh, a bit of a pain to get content on, I guess I mean to say. But, eh. Down here, I've got a little reversing camera uh, screen. Little reversing camera screen. 12 bucks off eBay, kind of whatever. Uh, and it does the preview out from the V4. Which is here, in the lower half of the case. So, the main mixer is the V4. I have... Uh, external in from outside the case, then I have feedback, and then I have iPad 1 and iPad 2. And let's jump through there. So over here on number one, I'll turn off, I'll get the lumen key on, that's fine. Camera, feedback, iPad 1, iPad 2. Where things get a bit interesting though is over here I've got this crappy little box that lets me switch between two external outputs so we're seeing the camera now we're seeing nothing but if I had something else plugged in there I'd be able to switch between what was coming in input one in terms of feedback this box also lets me with the flick of a switch route some internal feedback so here the output here it's just going pretty much straight to the input here. And you can see we're getting a little bit of, um, let me try to, I'll make it so there's stuff going into the system. So this is the kind of classic feedback um, that you get from just plugging an output into an input. Super straightforward, get some nice trails, nothing special. I do also, however, in that feedback path, have this video delay. Right, let me crank it up a bit. So this video delay, as the name suggests, it delays the video signal by very, very small amounts. So you see as I flick it, little artifacts get introduced. I'm now mirroring the feedback path so it'll kind of keep cycling and doing stuff for me. So you can see 
there's these kind of bright and dark sparks and little lines start to pop up. So that can be very good. And if you, of course, do it too much, that blue there was me killing the feedback signal. That's internal. You can also bypass that. So by pressing this red button, you bypass everything, including this. Um, and so that's nice as a momentary sort of chance to introduce some extra stuff. Of course, if I flick to external, the video for the feedback loop is now coming out here and going back in here, which means that I can process it with external gear like this thing. So this is Cam Link Vision 400. Uh, it's kind of like a cheaper sort of stripped down version of the uh, Video Equalizer by Videonix. Um, it's bigger, doesn't have a crazy power supply, but it's got some cool stuff in there. It's got invert, um, it's got some split screen stuff that can be quite nice. Contrast, color, sharpness. Uh, it also has wipe controls that go in either direction. And because I have the feedback path mirrored here, I get some nice, some nice kind of weird stuff going on here. Uh, oh, and you also have video brightness. That's nice as well. Uh, and a bypass. It's a bunch of cool kind of little tricks. But going back to the box and how I use it, um, in this kind of setup with uh, a camera over here, I might aim that at a CRT that's getting um, a feed of something else or a feed from the feedback path to get some nice kind of looping stuff there. But um, normally if I just want to do it in like super simple mode, I'll use these two banks, these two decks, and let's grab something good, something I know I like. Uh, Jump over to there, and so now, go on to three, cool. So I'll take some video, we're currently seeing what's happening here. Oops, just gonna touch that. Uh, this is a, a Max MSP patch. With some cool kind of, with some cool kind of geometric feedback in it. Normally what I'll do is I'll take that and I'll flip to internal feedback, I'll put my Luma key on, and as I crank it up, you'll see the whites here. I'm oh, sorry, I take that back, the blacks here. And now having a hole cut in them and we can see the feedback path. At the moment it looks a bit blurry. That's because um our feedback isn't really being manipulated and so it's all just kind of blurring into each other. That's fun, but um, something a bit nicer is to put on a mirror effect. This is a quad mirror. Of course, could take it more, but often the simplest um, of geometric effects work quite nice. So now you can see as things get introduced from what is visible in our Luma key, they repeat onwards. Sorry, let me go back to that Luma key. I'll mirror, and I'll also mirror the top layer. So now the incoming video is being mirrored, and so is the feedback. And with this knob, I can control how much of the dark colors are cut out and how much of the feedback is let through. And from that, I get some pretty nice, just sort of, you know, psychedelic tunnel sort of stuff. And of course, with this T-bar, I can bring over now a mix of both these videos. So I'm getting my flashing kind of color bars as well as this feedback stuff. 
being introduced into the feedback loop here. With my external processing, it is possible to possibly crank stuff kind of up and down. Oh, sorry, I'm on, I'm on internal, that's why. Haha, <laughs> that'll do you. Gotta remember where you've got your uh, feedback routed. This bypass button, you'll see as I do that, removes our delay. As I press it, things start to black and white a bit, they fade out a bit quicker. But flick it to external, and the transition between internal and external is quite nice as well. Internal is this smooth kind of, whereas external, there's quite a large time delay that comes from using Revision 400, or most things. And once I have it out there, have it processing here, I'm able to kind of make these changes, pull the sharpness up and down, the contrast up and down, the color up and down. Um, and I'm relying on the fact that there's enough happening in my videos, there's enough kind of change and there's enough kind of new stuff being introduced that there's kind of always going to be something new or something cool kind of happening in the video. I can, of course, jump over to this iPad over here. Back to myself. Over to the camera, balanced kind of precariously over to my left. Uh, another thing I'm a very big fan of, let's flick back to internal, and let's get something a bit more predictable. Great, me, brilliant, it's me coming through this camera here. Feedback path selected here, and as I cut through it, I've turned the negative on. And so that means that every time this loop comes around, the video that is being passed through the feedback path is now going to be negative. And that gives, and there's a couple of different negative modes as well, and that gives a really nice, stripey, Effect here. Let's pull that back down. Yeah, I love that so much. So one thing I'm a very big fan of is go something like that. Jump across to here. You can see the movement here of this woo 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 looping coming from over here, sort of being repeated, being repeated and being inverted. So I'm a really big fan of how kind of gross and dirty that looks. Of course, flick it over to external processing. Now there's a whole bunch of extra time and some color processing introduced. Now let's turn that off. That was a double negative there. I was also negating it on here, unfortunately. <laughs> so what was that? Yeah, so now we're getting some messy, stroby, hardcore kind of Jump to the colors. So you can see it's not just a matter in this case of getting uh, our feedback path, but our feedback path now involves inversion, which is something I really love to give a kind of extra little bit of, you know, oomph to it. See if I can find something a bit more beaty. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So it's I'm now mirroring the feedback path. I'm using Luma Key to cut out this footage. It's from a film clip called Beat the Drum. I'm not quite sure who did it, but it's sort of a block stop motion animation. And you can see that we're getting these nice kind of 
for looping inversions here. Another effect I'm a big fan of is to set our tip off fader to white and to use kind of hard edge wipes or, um, no, that's not, that's not a great one, but uh, use hard, hard edge wipes or EFX in order to slice up and introduce some extra, you know, some extra kind of feedback stuff to our path. So let's bring it across. And these sharp edges that I introduce when I move this fade up. I don't love how that looks, but you get the idea. These sharp edges that I get from introducing this fade up. Well, I'm going to do some cool kind of cuts, introduce some extra kind of. something I don't love about this mixer. The knob applies to the last selected effect, which I think I talked about in the, um, in the V4 video. And of course, this feedback path would not be complete without some cameras. And here's some great strobe feedback coming from this camera and being run through the, uh, the usual sort of effects that I talked about. So yeah, that's like, a, that's like a pretty quick look at this rig, um, kind of what I'm doing with it at the moment. There are plans to introduce some extra stuff. I want to get some of my video synths in here. I want to get some video effects on the output that will hopefully make it um, a little more, uh, a little more sort of like expressive and useful. Um, but I'm very happy to have something that can really be self-contained, work by itself, you know, totally no problems there. Like I said, it's back in self-contained mode. You know, there's a lot of stuff you can kind of do with it, just sort of as is. It's a kind of strobe gross weirdness. So yeah, I'll probably keep a little log as I continue to expand it, as I continue to make um, little changes. I continue to do kind of fun stuff with it. Oh, and that is a, this black button is also a um, feedback mute. So that also will mute the feedback and make it go. Uh, I mean, normally it would be a blue screen, but in this case it is yellow because of the negative, yep, there we go. So that's nice, because you can kind of, if you have a, an effect turned on here, you can sort of just kill your feedback instantly, should you need to do that for whatever reason. So thanks for tuning in, taking a look at um, what this new rig is like and what it's doing. So it's a mobile DJ rig, so joke's on me, because um, who knows when there's going to be. Uh, out of the house kind of gigs and VJing stuff happening again, but you know, it'll happen and when it does I will have the rig Mwah. So till next time 
um, let me know if you've got any of this equipment. Um, have you had any luck using color code VJ with newer computers? Um, I have a lot of trouble putting <laughs> footage on there. Um, have you built any cool kind of little tools like the one I've got here? Um, anyone using little video delay units? Definitely let me know. I'm always looking for new kind of cool ways to use those. Um, so yeah, please hit me up. Until next time. You can see it's a small size rip off road case. Pretty good. Mm. Mm, not very heavy, all things considered. I used to lug uh, two V4s, these two iPads, um, what? Trancer, a bunch of my synths, a uh, second mixer, second mixer, the cameras, just sucking, <laughs> just, just smashing shit, just smashing shit. Um, you still lug all that crap around, but um, now, mm, nice, small, compact little thing, mm, pretty good.